wish you were in Hadong, Korea with me. This place is amazing to me. It, uh, I see it kind of as the next uh, Zen paradise, right? Like kind of like Kyoto Uji vibes. All right, anyways. So the big turbo thought in my mind is why is there so much like design hierarchy and racism? So what I mean by that is uh, this, wow, it's so beautiful, okay? So for example, um, you know, why is it that even if you're super rich and successful in Korea, you would prefer driving a Rolls Royce, uh, a Lamborghini, um, a Bentley, a Mercedes Maybach or a S-Class rather than driving the highest end Hyundai Genesis or Kia, whatever. Because actually, in fact, I personally think, shout out to Hyundai design team, etc. cetera. Uh, and also FYI, Hyundai owns Kia and also Hyundai Genesis. Genesis is uh, Hyundai, but anyways. So I actually personally think that the design of uh, the new modern Hyundais, Kias, Genesis is actually superior to a lot of the German designs. So for example, the new what? Hyundai, ah, the, man, they need to fix their naming conventions. I'll, I'll write some thoughts, but anyways, the new super high-end luxury sedan of Hyundai Genesis, of Genesis, Genesis.com, um, the extended wheelbase. I think it's, in my mind, like a greater flex and interesting, more interesting and superior than even having the most high-end Rolls-Royce Cullinan or the you know, Phantom or the Ghost or the, um, even driving a Lamborghini Urus or a Bentley Musain or something like that. And, you know, why is that the case? I think, you know, these other foreign brands, right? Like they could kind of rest on their laurels knowing that they have the brand prestige and people will still probably buy it because people have uh, no design taste and they prefer more prestige. Um, Whereas maybe more the scrappy underdogs like Hyundai, Kia, um, Genesis, because they're underdogs, there's a stronger impetus and uh, drive to become more epic and stuff like that because they're the underdog. And you know, Americans like uh, underdogs. Also the thing that's so interesting with like Hyundai, etc., is that they're Korean, Korean American, like uh, at this point, we could consider Korea kind of like a neo or a new colony of uh, America. Just look at the military intervention. Um, and so even the best designers, I think that come out of art center, um, you know, automotive design, whatever, shout out to my, um, my brother-in-law, John Narciso, um, is, The best, most innovative designers tend to be Korean, Korean American, and they're all like flocking to Hyundai and Kia, which are actually doing super interesting stuff. Um, but anyways, so I think maybe it's um, like it takes time to create some sort of brand identity or legacy or prestige. So for example, like BMW, Mercedes has been around way longer than, you know, Hyundai, Kia. And then also when Hyundai, Kia, et cetera, started off, like they were actually very, not so good cars, right? And super cheap, whatever. But then again, we had to consider too, you know, especially post-war, World War II, the notion of Coco made in Japan was actually seen as uh, inferior, like like very much like the way we see made in China as being inferior today. Um, to have a Honda car was not seen as reliable, not seen as good and stuff like that. So building a brand takes time. Um, but the the problem I, I feel and I, I think is that People have no pride, they don't have self pride, they don't... I actually think that, contrary to popular belief, most people nowadays don't have any national pride. So, for example, if you're a super billionaire rich Chinese, mainland Chinese businessman or whatever, um, you would prefer probably being driven around in a Rolls Royce or some sort of car like that instead of the highest end Chinese car company um, like a Karma or a... A fair day future right uh same thing with the korean businessman the korean ceo like um my friend uh june uh, goodhouse kim i think he told me a story of like how um the like one of the ex hyundai ceos was like 
being seen driven around in either a Jaguar or a Rolls Royce or something like that or a Mercedes, I don't know. And it's like so hypocritical because, or contradictory because here you have the CEO of Hyundai, right? Prefer being driven in a different type of car than his own national car. Like that's, that's not a good idea. Like it's kind of the same thing too, where, um, you know, most of my friends or Google employees I know, right? They all have MacBook Pros. They're not using a Chromebook, right? They're, um, they all would prefer to have the newest iPhone Pro. They're not going to be using, um, a Pixel, right? But you know, you could do a business meeting. You got to show up with the Chromebook and the Pixel because, you know, you got to like put on that facade. But anyways, so people tend not to have pride in their own things and devices, etc. And so I feel like the first step is to almost become more like blockheaded and more nationalistic towards whatever you're doing, your things, etc. Because in fact, that's how we build pride. So for example, um, you know, everyone loves Tesla, right? Um, but people tend to forget or not think that actually, yes, yep, uh, that, uh, yeah, look, the, the new Hyundai Genesis look really good, right? So um, people forget that also like uh, Tesla is an American company, technically. Elon Musk, probably the most successful entrepreneur of all time, at least by today's regards, is by nationality South African. But thank God that America has pretty lax or maybe had, had lax policies towards um, immigration and resettlement. Um, even Steve Jobs, right, like his um, his dad, uh, his estranged dad was actually Lebanese, I believe. Oh, no, no, not Lebanese, Syrian from Syria. Um, also, uh, probably the most interesting, greatest modern living philosopher, Nassim Taleb, is Lebanese from Beirut, Lebanon, but now resides in the States. Um, so I think maybe the strength of America and an American design thinking and stuff like that is to kind of shamelessly steal from other schools and modes of thought like even Steve Jobs hugely inspired by the Bauhaus, German design, um, Dieter Rams, etc. Um, and he also loved like Zen, Japanese, wabi-sabi, Kyoto aesthetics. So he was the first person with the courage or the balls to kind of become more of a tyrant, like a design tyrant, where it's like it was either Steve's job way or the highway. And his tenacity and his stubbornness was great because do you remember when the first iPhone first came out? Everyone's like, what? There's only one button, a, a home screen? Like this, he was seen as insane. And also not having a physical keyboard when Blackberries were all the rage, right? So, uh, or when the first, you know, iPad was invented, right? That there were no USB ports and then people were like giving so much hate mail, right? Um, but anyways, so as a designer or innovator or whatever you are, right? To become insanely tenacious and hard-headed in your design beliefs is essential because if you count out or quote, quote, you know, compromise or try to reach some sort of accord with others, you're just gonna end up making like a very mediocre or uninteresting product. Um, and for the most part, I think the reason why um, Asian design tends to, and even um, German design, truth be told, tends to be a uh, kind of more um, iterative and not radically different is that the CEOs or the heads or the you know, founders, whatever, they don't really have a strong enough vision or tenacity to keep it things their way. So for example, in Asia, China, Korea, Japan, etc., there's kind of more of a stress towards conformity and obedience rather than radical differentness, right? Um, in America, I mean, certainly that the, the herd mentality exists as well, but for the most part, like there tend to be more tail individuals, like more outliers in America that, you know, kind of crazy, like an Air Kim or a Kanye West or whatever, that maybe have been raised in a different type of unique way, which allows for more kind of radical innovation and uh, doing things a, a different way. Um, so for example, even being here in the Korean countryside or the mountainside, as I like to call it, walking without a shirt on is kind of seen as like insanely barbaric, but there's no law against it. <laughs> so I'm just gonna do as I please, even though my mom yells at me. Um, and yeah, so I like the idea of like, you know, treat it like Burger King, like do it your way. 
or like Frank, Frank Sinatra said. Um, but it's so funny because to do things your way is kind of seen as like this false machismo foolish thing. But I don't know, even Jay-Z, right? Like the reason why Jay-Z is so great is just like how hard he is. Like, you know, him ham, hardest motherfucker alive, right? Uh, go super ham, go super hard. And more recently, you know, I don't know, maybe is Jay-Z getting soft? I don't know. Um, you know, first of all, he shouldn't have cheated on his wife. Um, but anyways, uh, but anyways, so I think in order for design to advance, you kind of need more Illuminati, not an Illuminati, what, Illuminary visionaries at the board with insane tenacity. That's where we could all learn from Steve Jobs or Elon Musk. Like, if anything, Elon Musk slash Kanye are like Steve Jobs 2.0 insofar much as they are extremely stubborn. So actually becoming more stubborn is good for design. Now, the, the trick or the difficulty is how does one be stubborn in modern society where everyone's trying to get you to be cool, cool, flexible? Um, I think it's one, A, just courage, personal courage, and two, it's actually like allowing yourself, give yourself a ticket to be an asshole or a bad, a quote, quote, bad or evil person, I suppose, um, and to quote, quote, hurt the feelings of others. So for example, I fast, I only eat breakfast for lunch, um, I don't eat breakfast for lunch, I only have one massive meal a day, and I eat like massive amounts of meat, which is quite expensive and difficult to procure. So if I was just like a good, obedient, you know kid or asian person or individual like i'll just you know load up on the rice and the potatoes and stuff like that to just fill me up as cheaply as possible at the risk of you know not being super duper fit and being fat whatever um yeah being a little bit more foolish more blockheaded more barbaric is the future Like our best friend Nietzsche said, also a German philosopher, and also technically Polish, I believe, we are the new barbarians.